Guys, I've got a new watch and <laughs> it's ruined my life. It's so brutal. I hate being heckled by technology. I was like, oh, a fucking smart watch. You think you're better than me? <laughs> Bit of a mouth drum fill there. Got a little longer, so it seems. I burn out, so to speak. Sing with me. I come a little closer. <laughs> I like to imagine that somewhere, somewhere, someone did sing it with me and just stopped what they were doing and went, oh. <laughs> You know what? Maybe just for the fun of it. Just go back and sing it with me. Like, just click that little button on your podcast app or the scroll bar on YouTube and just head back 15 seconds and go, oh, oh, oh. Trust me, you'll get a real kick out of it. Hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> um, welcome to chapter 153 of Contemplations of a Semi-Competent Caucasian. That one was sent in by Amelia. Thank you very much. Uh, keep them coming in. That was a good one really summed up the tone of the show in one sentence. It's not even a memoir at this point, because oh, I guess it is. A memoir is, any, any, I guess, just a, an autobiography of someone's life. You know, it's just a memoir is just a tale of what I do. So it is, but it is more going into contemplations of a, semi, of a semi-competent. That's fucking, this is what I mean, Amelia. You fucking nailed it bang on. The fact that I can't even say contemplations of a semi-competent Caucasian shows how semi-competent I am. Um, I like that competent, does competent, doesn't even mean you're good. Doesn't competent just mean like you're, you're just air at something? Competent. Competent. Hang on. Just got to look up the meaning. Having the necessary ability. Yeah. Being competent is pretty much the bare minimum. And I'm semi that. So that's after you've nailed it on the head, Amelia. Um, and it's great to have your back front of the week. Hang on. Sorry. Just a bit of a burp. That's a bit very unprofessional. Um, I got that from the uh, comment section underneath the last episode. Just reading some of the comments that are up on my screen here. Uh, I was talking about uh, what the worst place in Australia was last week. And someone wrote, uh, Mickey said, I'm from Sydney and I support that statement. I said that Sydney was the biggest shithole in Australia, and I stand by it. And uh, yeah, he said, I'm from, or she said, I'm from Sydney, and I support that statement. Sydney is one great big outhouse portaloo. <laughs> but they spelt portaloo wrong as well. So, so good. Um, and then someone said, We need a Star Wars podcast or live stream. Dude, I have no many. I did not realize how many people who lived in Sydney hated it. I was honestly expecting not backlash, but a little bit of. I thought maybe that was a controversial take. Clearly not. Clearly, I'm just I'm somewhat relatable on this podcast. That I said Sydney sucks, and here's why. And then I was expecting a few people from Sydney to back me up. Absolutely, no one did. I got no messages, no comments. All of like all these people. Uh, Sydney suck. Sydney does suck, and I live here. Three likes, you know? People are uh, agreeing. Someone called me a foreskin. That's good. Um, not really constructive, more of just an insult. Um, what does that even mean? I'm a foreskin. You know what is the closest thing to being a foreskin? A pug. <laughs> Pugs are just like little doggy foreskins. Just too much skin going around. You can you can bunch them up. You can play with them. You, go, <laughs> you know? And then I, I guess other dogs without much hair are just like circumcised pugs, aren't they? Something to think about. Again, contemplations of a semi-competent Caucasian. Uh, man, I don't actually, like I forgot, I didn't really read the comments under this. So I'm just reading them live now. I think this is the first ever comment section reading of the podcast I've ever done. Uh, Fashion Panda and the Shapes said, Luke has the quintessential Aussie accent. Uh, thank you, I guess. Um, I just love people's YouTube usernames. Like, if you've got... Okay, under under this week's episode, if you're an audio listener, you may not be able to participate, or you can go on YouTube if it applies to you. Um, comment if you have, like, the shittest... The, you, if you think you have the shittest YouTube username. I want the top comment 
to like people to vote with their likes to see who's got the shittest username and don't make a fake one. It has to be your real one that you've been running with since you were like nine. Cause people always have those embarrassing ones that like my first ever email account is like a hotmail one. And it's like Luke underscore legend, you know, something. And then it's like, has a bunch of numbers in it. Like I remember when I made that, I was like, mm, how do I describe myself in an email? I'll write the year that I made this, right? My favorite Melbourne footy players number and the fact that I'm a legend. Boom. That is my email. And I've that's the email account I use to log in at airport Wi-Fi now if I don't want to give them my actual one. Because, you know, you don't want like Sydney airport, particularly Sydney, ugh, yuck, to be sending you spam being like, oh, bloody, there's 20% off books at our gift shop. You don't want that just because you fucking wanted to look up something once in an airport. There's nothing worse than getting emails from somewhere that you don't have any recollection of you signing up. Because at least when you sign up to airport Wi-Fi and cafe Wi-Fi, you made your bet. Now you got to lay in it. Right, You made that decision to give them your good email address and you need to live with that forever or until you unsubscribe. But sometimes you just get an email where you're like, I don't know what this is. I've never bought anything. Like I got an email uh, a few weeks ago from a reef fishing company. I've never gone reef fishing is in my life. One time I went to the Great Barrier Reef. I was 10. I don't think they remembered Right, I don't think it was from that trip. I don't think I had an email account at that point when I was ten. I don't know. So where, why am I getting like, oh, all your favorite bargains refishing? I'm like, you're wasting. It costs them money because I know I have a mailing list, right? Where you can sign up. By the way, I'm not going to spam you like a fucking airport or a reef fishing company does. Um, I'm just going to let you know when I'm coming to your city next. I send out nothing but cracking emails with either great discounts for merch or by the way, I never do that. I probably like one a year. You might get one email a year if I do drop a new merch item and then another email when I'm coming to your town. That's it. So it's, you're not going to, there's no hidden, you know, I'm not going to send you fucking, or maybe I should start sending you just great deals on reef fishing because I didn't even hate it. That was the problem. Like it made me angry because I was like, right, I don't know what this is. But then I opened it and I was like, like, why do I, why am I interested in this? It was the first time I'd actually considered buying scuba, like scuba gear. I went onto their website. Like it said, click here to find out more. And I was like, fuck, maybe I could be into scuba diving. And I was scrolling through their website. I was like close to buying like this. And I was like, hang on, what am I doing? A, I don't have $800 to spend on fucking some kind of scuba gear. I couldn't even remember what it was, like an oxygen I was like, I didn't even know you could buy that shit online. It was like really base grade stuff. It was like little attachments that go on various, I don't know. I don't know a lot about reef fishing, but I was like, it seems odd to me that you can just buy shit online. Like, and here's how you murder fish. I don't know. It was weird to me. Anyway, what am I talking about, guys? I've just gone on a massive tangent. Um, Oh, I was talking about your username. Yeah. The person, uh, for example, Fashion Panda and the Shapes, pretty weird username. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Just uh, do a lot of Star Wars fans uh, in the comment section here. Anyway, um, that's it. And uh, yeah. Oh, and the person who comments lesbians are gay under all of my YouTube videos. Um, I've noticed, like I see this person all the time. The username is I'll punch you in the face. So it's pretty aggressive. And then he comments, lesbians are gay. And I'm pretty sure he likes his comment every week because it always has one like, and I can't imagine. I'm like, can you just stop? That's like, that's like just commenting, uh, you know, books are for reading. It's like, yes, correct. I don't know what you want. I don't know what it adds to the comment section. Um, I was, I was thinking this week, I was like, okay, there is a few great benefits of comment sections. There's when someone passes away, you can send condolences to people on Facebook. That's a great example of a positive use for a comment section. And then there's Reddit, which is often people arguing about unimportant things. And that's 
kind of what happens under my stuff. People don't really argue under my videos, which is good to see. You know, you see some pretty vile YouTube comment sections. And I like to see that we've created a bit of a bit of a peaceful kind of one where you can still hurl abuse at me. That's fine. And you can still hurl abuse at someone else if they really had it coming, which I appreciate. That's good. And other than that, I don't really see much negativity in in a, in the, my, my comment sections, which is great. And I applaud uh, my community uh, for that. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't see dumb comments, but that's a that's good. That's a thing that's gonna pop up because we're on the internet. But yeah, stuff like useless stuff, I, I see a lot. Like this, just lesbians are gay under every video, and it's like, I don't know. Is it a is it a joke? Because I don't. I've not, I've never laughed. And this person must must watch every video. So I really appreciate. So if your old punch you in the face, um, I really appreciate you watching every video. That means a lot. But I just it's a little confusing. Um, anyway, that's that's my hot take this week. Um, that oh no, that's his hot take that lesbians are gay. So fuck. Imagine if you you just imagine if you read that comment once under my video. That's what I like to imagine. <laughs> that person comments that under one video and one guy's just scrolling through the comments because he's bored or some girl's just like scrolling through, right? And they get to that comment, lesbians are gay. And someone just went, what the fuck? Since when? <laughs> How? Is this, have I been living at, yes, you have. Have I, oh my God, my life is a lie. That would be great if that's how someone found out. <laughs> oh man, that's so good. That's like being like, you know, forks, you, you know, utensils are for eating. It's like, what the fuck? I've been picking my nose with them. This is crazy. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's, that's last week's comment section. I'm, I don't know sure why we started off with that. I didn't plan for that. What I did want to talk about was before I went on a 12 minute tangent, I fucking hell. Um, before I did that, I was going to talk about my new watch guys. I've got a new watch and it is, it's ruined my life. I'll be honest. I got it yesterday and I don't know how I feel about it. And I'll tell you why. So I used to be like an ex runner, if you don't know. And I say ex runner, I still run, but I would say to call yourself a runner, you got to be elite, right? And I've unfortunately hung up the spikes. You could say at this stage and now, whenever I talk about my running past, it must be referred to as the glory days because I will never, ever get back to that standard of running. I think for a few years, there was a little bit of hope. There was like that tiny little part of me that I was like, I can, I can get back. I can get back to running at a state level while juggling a comedy career. And at the time I was on radio and doing podcasts and touring and going into state twice a week. I can... I can get back to, I can be an Olympian if I tried. Um, <laughs> there was this little part of me that was like, if all else fails, I can turn back on my good friend running. Now, has that ship sailed? Absolutely. It never was there. It was never in the dock. That ship was long gone the day that I really missed out on the national team, which was heart heartbreaking time. I used to be an 800 meter runner, 1500 meters. I, uh, for, the, for, the, for the running nerds out there, um, again, we're talking about the glory days here. So don't be impressed by this. This is what you're witnessing here is a sad old man talking about the glory days at a pub. Is This is what the equivalent of that is. It's a guy going, yeah, I could apply for Collingwood, uh, but then, uh, yeah, my bloody, I stubbed me toe. So I, I couldn't, anyway, uh, do you want another beer? That's what that is. This is what this is. All right, this is the equivalent of that. My, my best time in the 800 meters was sub two, which is very, if you're in the running world, it's kind of like the the goal that everyone wants to get to. I, I ran a 158. Uh, I got out in a two, maybe like 10 times ever. And then I never made nationals. I missed out by the qualifier by like 0.2, I believe. So like, like, a, like less than a quarter of a second, which is, a, I guess it's a, it's a lot. Uh, oh no, sorry. It's it's not a lot, but it's also like when you're trying to shave off seconds each time. It's you know it's whatever. It, it was close. Um, and then since then, I've retired my running watch. 
I guess I've just been running casually, hitting that well gym. You know, I've, I've definitely toned down to like, I'm like that guy now who runs along the bike track and I have never, I don't think anyone's ever run past me on a local bike track unless I know them. Unless they're like already a friend of mine from running. A stranger has never run past me, which I do pride myself on. Um, the only time I'll ever get overtaken is by someone on a bike on my local bike track. So that's like the standard I'm at. I'm, I would say I'm an above average runner, but I'm definitely not elite, right? That those days are behind me. But I thought, you know what? It's quarantine. We're in a world pandemic. Running's one of the things that's keeping me sane at the moment. I've been smashing the world gym. I haven't been talking about it much, but I've been going like probably like at least four to five times a week. And we have like a chat in our uh, Discord, right, which you can join if you want to join my Patreon. The, the link is below. Um, or you just search Luke Hidgel on Patreon. And uh, we have a, a chat called Fitness Flexing and where a bunch of people have since this pandemic has started, uh, started smashing the well gym and they've all got these like fancy apps and they've, oh, this is the problem with my watch. I get fucking notifications and I feel like my wrist is getting jacked off. Um, or oh, Meg's calling. Meg, welcome to the podcast. What? Well, I thought you were doing this podcast. No, I, I wasn't before, but now I am. Oh, which podcast? Uh, Memoirs of a White Guy. It's really hard to oh, keep up, oh, isn't it? This... No, that's okay then. Oh, oh, really hang on. Am I, am I really interrupting? Really <laughs> hang I'm on. I'm making the podcast right now. Is this the biggest thing to happen? Yes, I think, yes. No, hey, hey, hey. Firstly... <laughs> When you said, oh, when I said Memoirs of a White Guy, what podcast that I do would have you been excited to be on? Um, well, the Luke and Meg, of course. Oh, the Patreon one that significantly less people listen to. Yes, of course. Right, but you're on that every week. But, but, but you know, like, yes, less people listen to it, mm. but is it still the best podcast? Um, yeah. It, it, I'm sounding it out. Yeah. No, no, I'm sounding it out. It has its moments. That's probably more <laughs> accurate. <laughs> now, what were you calling me about? Was it related to what I was talking about on the podcast? What were you talking about on the podcast? Uh, just, I was bragging about the glory days of running like a sad old man in a pub. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had to make a cut there. We ended up talking about what we're going to have for dinner for far too long. And, um, you guys don't need to hear about Caesar salad. Um, <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah. The fact that every time I get a notification, okay, no, I, I, I haven't even got to that yet. So the point is there's a bunch of people in my discord who have been absolutely flexing all their stats. They've been on for runs, posting like their pace and their elevation and their heart rate. And I've been getting uber jealous. I'm like, oh man, I used to love stats. I'm a fucking stat guy. Okay. I'm the type of guy where if you put a scale next to a toilet, I'd weigh myself before and after to see how many grams I shat. And that's not gross. That's just called being interested in statistics. I'm a mathematician. Okay, so I love bloody data, you know, give me all of it. I want to know my heart rate. I want to know everything. And all these people, they just, you know, I, I love them all. And they just keep fucking flexing, you know, f flexing on there. And I'm like, fuck this. So even though times are tough at the moment, technically I'm unemployed, right? But um, I did the proper millennial thing of... JobKeeper came in, right? I got that cash money from the government and it went straight out and I bought a smartwatch, which, guys, is one of the whitest things I've done all year. I think this podcast is memoirs of a white guy, okay? And I'm doing my people proud, okay? You fucking bet your ass I spend people's tax money on a smartwatch. That's capitalism, all right? Get amongst it. It's fucking good. I'm supporting that economy and that's what that money was for. Like I'm stimulating that economy, just slipping a little finger in and that economy is like, ooh, woohoo, Luke just bought a fucking smartwatch. Was it expensive? Uh-huh. Was it a little bit too expensive? Yeah, yes, it was. Did I get one of the low range ones? Uh-uh, I got a mid-range smartwatch. 
That's how well I'm doing. Well, that's how well the government paid me. Okay. Um, and so it's a Garmin, right? I was going to get the Apple Watch. Now, if you're a long-time listener of this podcast, you'll know that Apple and I have a very on and off relationship. Do I use pretty much all their products? Yes. Do I love them at times? Absolutely. Great products. That's why I buy them. Is their customer service and general uh, corporate bullshit a nightmare to deal with? F- fuck yeah. F- fuck yeah. Fuck shit. Hang on. Apple, if you're listening. Get the straw. Okay. Get, get the straw to your corporate mouth and suck my asshole, okay? Because I, I was looking into Apple Watches and the main reason, so I did want all these stats again because I used to love running, being know how far I went, what my pace was. And it does help you actually improve your times because like I'm very competitive, but only against myself. Like I don't care about winning races and stuff anymore. I just like want to get better. And uh, having a watch that tells you like your times yesterday and stuff is awesome. And... Uh, so I was like, you know, this will make running more fun. But the main, one of the other main reasons why I wanted this new watch is to pump tunes while I run because I'm a fucking mad dog, all right? And I like grooving as I'm exercising. Sue me, okay? If I, like, dude, nothing, nothing makes you feel more alive than just listening to like full-on blaring rap music while you run. Just like, you know, like... Sicko mode comes on, or just an example. It's like, yeah, sicko mode comes on. It goes, don't, 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 and you just run along. I don't know the lyrics, but I get the vibe, you know. And I'm just running along, like being the white guy I am, fucking just blasting rap music right in my bullshit expensive. I now had to buy wireless headphones because, of course, I did right. So, um, I was looking into Apple Watch. I was like, oh, they're pretty affordable, like the old one, right? And then. I was like, oh, cool. And it has Spotify on it. Did some more research. Can't use Spotify without your phone being there. So I was like, great. They're like, that's okay, though. You're going to have to sign up to Apple Music so you can listen to fucking music on your run. I was like, Apple, you know what? Suck it. Okay? I officially told them to suck it. Well, I didn't, but the way I did that was not buying their product. I was like, I've actually fucking had it with Apple. If you got to buy this and then you can get this and this and this. And it's like, they just keep you in their fucking web. And I was like, you know what? This is where I'm drawing the line. So I did the pettiest shit ever and spent $200 more than an Apple watch, right? <laughs> on this fucking watch, just so I can listen to Spotify on it. Is that pathetic? Absolutely. Do I regret it? Nah, not at all. Okay. I loved it. Listen to Spotify on my run. I was like, this is my preferred streaming service. And I love tunes and I love running. This is great. This is exactly what I wanted. It was a bloody hefty price though. Now, I got this watch watch yesterday and I haven't really taken it off since. Pros. Had a great time running. It's exactly what I needed before. One of the cons, <sighs> me setting it up. It was just one of those things where... I'm not an instructions guy. If you read the instructions, you're a nerd. All right, live live life a little. Uh, So I just like I was like I can figure this out, right? So and I wanted to get my apps on it and all this stuff, and I'm I'm slowly working it out, and it's getting to me. All of a sudden, I hit this error. It's not working. So I check it into the internet. I'm like, ah, this isn't working. And people are like, yeah, it's a common issue. Do this. It's like sweet. So I did the fix. The fix isn't working. I was like, okay, now I'm mad. Now, eventually I get it working and by this point I'm fucking fuming because I'm a privileged white male. When I get even held up in life, imagine, okay, see this from my perspective. You've never had an obstacle before in your life. When you eventually get some come up, little hurdle, even just a step up, you're like, oh, this is, this sucks. Little hurdle came up. I was like, okay, my day's over. Fuck this. And uh, <laughs> I cracked the shits. All of a sudden, I put on my watch, right? It starts working. The first thing it tells me is your stress levels are very high and your heart rate is irregular. And I was like, you fucking think. 
what do you expect from me? That's the first thing it told me. Oh, your stress is a bit high. And it said, maybe sit down and have a rest. And I was like, hey, maybe make a good product, right? Where it doesn't take two hours to set it up. And I might come into this with a lower stress level. You know what? I'm going to check my stress now. So the highest stress, all right? It, it's, it's like rates your stress out of 100. The first time I put on the watch, I was at an 84. <laughs> now, that seems pretty high. Now, talking about this, I'm at a 54. So I'm still pretty stressed. I'm over half stressed. I don't really know how they work out the stress on these things. Some people might be able to like tell me during the week if they know how, but I think it's just mainly done on like heart rate and like, I don't know. I guess that's it. I don't really know how it's done, how they calculate it. Oh fuck. Now I'm at a 60 because I'm getting angry. All right. I've just gone up 72. What the fuck? Dude, this is, this is why I originally said, I think I hate this watch. Now I'm at an 81. Fuck. This watch is stressing me out. This is the thing that's made me stressed. <laughs> Oh, fuck. It's like this endless, it's such a vicious cycle. I go, I want to measure my stress. And then the watch tells me I'm stressed. And then it makes me more stressed because I sit there and I was like on the couch last night. And it told me I was sitting down for an hour and it told me I was at like a 60. And I just fucking set me up. I just start yelling at it. And I'm like, why the fuck does it say I'm stressed? <laughs> and Meg's like, huh, maybe it's right. <laughs> Oh man, it's so brutal. I hate being heckled by technology. I was like, oh, a fucking smartwatch. You think you're better than me? <laughs> I'm a child. Literally, I pay a stupid amount of money for it to get heckled by technology. Sucks, man. I'm the boss. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I find myself just, oh, fuck, I'm back to an 80 now. This is the thing. It fluctuates so hard. I don't even know if it's accurate, but my heart rate has stayed exactly the same. My heart rate is sitting at 76 right now, right? Which is not a great resting heart rate, but my resting heart rate is usually um, 61, I believe. Anyway, this is the thing, guys. I fucking love stats. Hella into stats. Um, and I'm obsessed with this watch, but it's also ruining my life. And then, I, because it's a smart watch, right? Well, it thinks it is. It fu it's fucking branded as a smart watch. And it's like, mate, you're a watch. Fucking don't get ahead of yourself. Um, I programmed it to like, it's links with my phone. So whenever I get like a notification on my phone, my wrist vibrates and dude, the group chat last night just started popping off. Like all, all my mates just start getting in there. You know, someone was chatting to chick on Tinder and everyone's giving him advice and my wrist just starts going and I'm like, I couldn't work out how to fucking turn it off. So I'm sitting there literally getting a wristy. Like, like getting jacked off by my watch. My finger's just like, I'm like, oh my God, this is, I don't hate this, right? And it's just, it's going off like, just won't stop vibrating. And I was like, oh my God, how do I get off? Then my fucking stress levels start going up. I'm at like an 82 and I'm just going, oh, fuck me, right? And then, oh, sorry, the camera just stopped. Um, Yeah, so I'm freaking out. My fucking... You know, the, my hand's just going up, you know, like I'm just like, do I put it on my cock? Should I make the most of this situation? I don't know what to do. Not often do you just have a vibrating wrist, right? And my arm's just sitting there. I feel like I'm getting little mini electric shocks. You know, it's like, doo, doo, doo. I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, I eventually work out how to turn off the notifications. and But even still, I haven't fully done it because when Meg called, my fucking wrist started vibrating. It's like, I don't need to know that, you know? Now, like when I, yeah, it's just crazy. So that's annoying. Um, that's a thing that's happened in my life. And, you know, just, and then, and then like my finger just turned into fucking Spider-Man, you know, just came everywhere. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I've, I've, that's how I've been this week. Hope you guys are well. Uh, I've been having my life getting dictated by a watch. Oh, and another thing about this watch it has this little setting on it. It's called your body battery. So it, it's, it also is out of one. So it's, it's out of a hundred and it kind of like shows you, it predicts how much energy you have. Now I started the day today at a 99 and 
It takes into account your rest, your steps, blah, 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 what you've been doing, how active you've been. And it kind of like cal- tries to calculate how drained you are throughout the day. And I'm currently sitting at a 47. So apparently I'm over half drained right now. But this thing's bullshit, man. Like, it just, I don't know. The problem is, like, I was going to do this podcast last night and my watch literally told me not to. I went for a run. It said my body battery was at eight, which is fucking running on fumes, apparently. And yet somehow I've had this watch for five hours at this point. I start letting it dictate my life. I'm like, oh, well, I was going to do a podcast, but apparently my body battery is low. I was like, I can't do it now. I'm going to have to recharge and do it tomorrow. (laughs) Do you know how fucked that is? Just letting this stupid thing that's jacking off your wrist, like control your life like a maniac. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Oh, great. Now the stress thing just says the word stress. That's awesome, isn't it? I fucking overloaded it. Unbelievable. So anyway, guys, hope you guys are going well. Honestly, if this whole stress meter picks up, I'm going to look like Obama at the end of his presidency. Just gray haired, looking like shit, but I've done a fucking great job. You know, that's my vibe. Um, here's the thing. I was thinking last night, I was like, man, I've got nothing to talk about on the podcast tomorrow. I haven't really done a lot this week. Bro, I got, I'm stacked up on content. Okay. None of it's relevant, but fuck, I've had a busy week compared to the last eight weeks because isolation in Melbourne has all, all the restrictions, the lockdown restrictions have been eased a little. You're allowed to have five people over. You're allowed to have groups of 10 outside. Um, and so I caught up with, uh, two of my mates this week and each time I saw family as well. And I swear to God, I'm not lying here. And it, maybe it's not crazy. I just thought it was wild. I'm 24. Now, maybe I don't know when, when you're supposed to finish growing, but I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be done. I had two people on two separate occasions this week. Tell me that I've gotten taller since they've seen me, like, since, you know, March. Is that possible? Have I grown? Like, I've been sleeping a lot, I guess. You know, I've been getting my my eight hours every night, which, you know, when I was traveling on the regional tour and stuff like that, we probably weren't getting enough sleep of what I guess I needed. So maybe that. I guess my diet's improved. I've been exercising. Could it be that this is actually the most together my life has been and as a reward... My body's like, let's fucking grow a couple of centimeters. Let's give him a little bit of a boost. Why not? Why not? We'll add a few more cells. We'll fucking prop a little bit of height on him, you know? Make sure he's... Because I'm, I'm hovering at six foot right now. I'm 182. And I think... I'm 182 centimeters. What's six foot? Uh, feet, two centimeters. Just going to do a quick calculation here, guys. So if I put in 182... Oh no, that's the thing. I'm I'm not six foot. Fuck. I'm five point nine seven foot currently. So maybe I haven't measured myself. So maybe now if I'm like close to what happens if I'm one eighty two point five? Uh or one eighty three. One eighty okay, one eighty three is six foot. So I need to grow maybe I've grown that extra centimeter now. So I I can officially say I'm six foot. I usually just say, like, how tall you are. I go, oh, about six foot, which is not a lie, right? It's just bending of the truth. Technically, I'm 5.97 feet, um, which is weird. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's that's a thing. So let me know. I will be actually interested to know. That's one stat that my watch doesn't calculate is height. You have to manually enter that. But uh, I've had two people the first time. I was It was... One of my mates, uh, you know, who I see pretty regularly, I hadn't seen him since this whole lockdown thing started. And he goes, have you grown? I was like, no. And he goes, no, you've definitely gotten taller. And I just dismissed it. I was like, he's an idiot. He just hasn't seen me for a while. And then my other mate said it. I saw him on a separate occasion. He's like, did you? He's like, I think you've grown. I was like, no, I definitely haven't grown. I was like, fuck, maybe I've got new shoes. But I wasn't even wearing the same shoes. Guys, I think I've grown. I don't know if that's possible. Let me know, okay? But fuck, it feels good. You know, it feels good to be maybe actually technically six foot now, um, which is great. But you know what, guys? Even if you're five foot nine, seven like I am, that's fine. 
All right, don't let it get you down, okay? I make no apologies. I'm this five is foot me. nine seven. So good to admit. That's felt really good. I feel like I've come out, you know? I feel like I've been a fraud saying I'm a six foot male. Um, to be honest, when you're actually like a normal height, like just an, I'm, sl- I'm like an above average height for a male. When you're just like a slightly above average height um, and like when you kind of, I was like the fill in, Ruckman in footy. Like that's where I sat on the height chart. Like, you know, center half forward, but like, so tall, you know, not a forward pocket. I'm not a fucking jockey, but like I was never in the ruck, but like if my, our two Ruckman got injured, they'd be like, Luke, can you try and do your best in there? And I'm like, oh, I'm not tall enough, but you know, whatever. So that was like my vibe. So it's good to kind of know where you sit now. But yeah, for any uh, other guys out there who might be rocking a 5.97 like myself, um, just be open about it. If someone says, are you six foot? Go, nah. But no one really asks you, what's my point? Uh, when, when you are a slightly above average male, no one really ever asks you your height. Like Lewis, who's very tall, he gets asked his height almost every day by strangers. Oh, mate, you're pretty tall. Yeah, tall, yeah, I'm six foot eight. By the way, he's fucking lying. He's not six foot eight. Um, there's no way. Because six foot eight... Actually, I'm going to call him out. I'm going to... Ex- Bo's Lewis Spears. Yeah, fucking he always goes, I'm six foot eight. Six foot eight is 207 centimeters. He has a joke. It doesn't even make sense. He goes, uh, I'm two meters tall. Uh, he goes, I'm six foot eight, which is exactly two meters tall. No, six foot eight is two meters and seven centimeters tall. Lewis Spears exposed. <laughs> I've actually told him to change the joke before. Um, and I think he just refuses to because, you know, it'll ruin his bad boy image. Um, what is, what is he actually? I think he's exactly two meters tall. Um, so he's six foot five, guys. So next time uh, Lewis says I'm six foot eight in a comment section, just correct him. Just actually, he's six foot five, six. Um, <laughs> fuck, he's gonna hate that. That's good. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Two people have said I'm taller. Oh, here's a good bit I've been doing. All right, if you, sorry if you. I guess haven't been listening to the podcast last couple of weeks. You just decided to tune into this one. I've absolutely lost the plot. It's nowhere to be seen at this point. The plot has been like, it's got to the point now, like where people are just putting up signs around the neighborhood. Like, Oh, Luke's plot. It's missing. If you find it, call this number. You know, I'm fucking up there with mittens and some fucking parrot. That's never coming back. Let's be honest. Dude, if you lose a bird, don't put up a sign. It's fucking gone. Okay, dogs and cats will come back. A bird just doesn't want to be in a cage anymore. Okay, or I saw that once. Someone's like, oh, we lost our bird. (laughs) I'm like, fuck, dude. It's probably, like, I don't want to be morbid, but it's probably dead, right, already, you know? And also, it's not coming back. Um, But, yeah, so my plot's completely lost. It's like on, like, a missing person's, some kind of list at the moment. Uh, Who knows where it's gone, but I don't think... Just like that bird, I don't think it will ever be coming back at this point. But for anyone else who's in a similar situation where you're in lockdown and you haven't been socializing as much as possible, you're like me, you feel like pure shit, just want a fucking pint on tap. That's all I want in this life. I'm a very simple man, which I think no one is disputing. (laughs) All I want is a beer on tap. That'll make me happy temporarily, but you know. That's just, that's just, I just feel like pure shit. Just want the pub back at this point. So anyway, if you're like me in that situation in your life where you're like, man, I just feel like I've lost the plot. Here's a good one to do to entertain. All right. Uh, for some reason, I remembered uh, that the Janoskians used to make <laughs> uh, music. I just thought about it the other day because I just don't do a lot. Right. Um, oh, sorry. I just turned my fucking... Um, why did I get an office works order? This is the thing. I get fucking emails on my watch now. Oh, I've just realized that Lewis is buying stuff for our new studio. All right, whatever. Okay. Dude, my fucking, now Keelan's texting me. Oh my God. My, now I'm horny. I fucking I keep vibrating. Um, <laughs> that's not a good sentence. <laughs> Keelan's texting me. Now I'm horny. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I remember that the Janoskians made music. So a good one I've been doing during the week is you just walk up to Meg or whoever you're living with. It could be your parents. 
It could be your, your brother, your sister. It doesn't matter. It could be your girlfriend, boyfriend. Fuck, could be your worst enemy. Even better to do it to your worst enemy. You just walk up to them or or if they have ever asked you to do something, like Meg might be like, oh, can you uh, go get me uh, that thing from the room? Or, or like, oh, have you seen the headphones? I think they're in the room. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll go get them. So if, they, if anyone asks you to do anything or even you can just do it unprompted, you just start going, oh, fine, fine. Fuck, yes, fine. What? Oh, God, whatever. I'll do it. Fine. And then I just started doing it one day and Meg's like, what? What? What are you talking about? And I was like, just fine. She's like, what? I didn't say anything. I'm like, oh, my God. Fine. Okay. Oh, yeah. You really want this? And she's like, what? I'm like, you really want this? I can do it. You know what? You've left me no choice. And then you just go. Like, honestly, this is the best night ever. This song. Dude. It makes me fucking howl laughing every time. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than creating a dramatic situation with whoever you live with. And they're thinking like, what the fuck is he going to say? You're like, fine. You're like, what? And you're like, oh my God, I'll do it. And then while it's playing, you're just like, this was your idea. My hands were tied. Woo. <laughs> Woo. This is the best night ever. I can't believe that. Oh, the, oh, I've run a bit. Fuck. Hang on. We'll keep listening. The best night ever. <laughs> Bro, they fucking made that song. And we're like, all right, we'll release it. And then the weird part about it, right? So I, I got fucking really deep in a wormhole this week, which I'm not proud of. But I, I did go into YouTube and start watching these old music videos by the Janoskians. And you know what was crazy? No one was, no one was hating on them at the time. No one, which I think is, that shows you really how the internet's changed. It's like, now, if, if someone was doing this, everyone, including me, would be like, this sucks, right? And that's, but no one, but everyone back in the day was either just like, oh, I'm not into that, so I'm not going to watch it. Or, or just like watching it going like, fuck yeah, you are my best friend. You are my fucking best friend. <laughs> oh man, it, dude. And I just fucking, I just started losing my shit. It's so funny, man. Their, their biggest song was Real Girls Eat Cake. I wonder what those guys are doing now. I've, I don't think they've uploaded in a while. I think they're from Melbourne, actually. Bro, you know what? I, I just think it's fucking hilarious that, like, they were so famous. Dude, and then I found they did this, like, pop punk one. I'm, I'm, I am embarrassed. I watched about four songs, okay? I'm embarrassed how deep I got into this Janoskian's. Uh, hole during the week and it's one of those times where you find yourself for Janoskian's videos deep and you're going like fuck was doing that bit to Meg even worth it at this point <laughs> because now I'm in an absolute hole um, watching dude and then I found this right so people might know I'm like really into pop punk music and then the, <laughs> they made this like pop punk song for some reason their record label couldn't pick a genre that they should be in. I don't know why. Like they should have just been like, be a boy band. And instead they've, they've made them like do these fake pop punk songs that they haven't even written themselves. Hang on. I'll get to the chorus. It's actually catchy, but it's fucking garbage. All right. It's <laughs> the wanna be alone. <laughs> I can't believe I know it. <laughs> Dude, it sounds like a song from Camp Rock or like it just like <laughs> it sounds like an old Jonas Brothers song, which is, I don't know, I guess what they were going for. They actually, to be to their credit, they fucking nailed it, you know? It's so good, man. Auto-tune does fucking wonders, doesn't it? It does, it does like show that Man, anything is possible. I think if you can take anything away from how big the Janoskians got was that you should never give up. No matter how much you shouldn't be famous, you can be. <laughs> um, it's good. I, I think good on them, man. They, you know, good on them. Fuck them, whatever. <laughs> I just think, anyway, that, there's more just a tip, guys. It's just a tip. If you want to do a good bit, 
Um, another good one is doing it to the Jonas Brothers. Just walking up to your, you know, I'm, I was, I might do this one to mum this week. Just walk up to her and go, oh, fine, mum, you know what? Oh, whatever, I'll do it if you want me to. You go around like you know. Yes, I know this off by heart. So I am you don't. Would you like me to prove? Um, I can prove that I know the song off by heart. I just don't think it will be good audio. Um, Meg, I think she's home now. Meg, um, do you reckon it would be good content if I just prove that I can sing Burning Up by the Jonas Brothers off by heart? Okay, she said, I can't hear you, but I'm sure whatever you're saying is good. So you know what, guys? Meg's, Meg reckons it'll be a good idea, so I'm going to do it. Um, this is where the podcast has got to. Um, it probably will get me copyrighted, but I think it's worth it. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, Luke Kidgel, am about to prove to you all that I know Burning Up by the Jonas Brothers off by heart. <clears throat> Here we go. Heart, you're cold. Yeah, you go around like you know. Who I am, you don't. You got me on my toes. Ah, I'm slipping into the lava. Trying to keep on going under. Oh, baby, who turned the temperature hotter? But I'm burning up, burning up for you, baby. Uh, 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 uh. That's the guitar, by the way. I'm just mainly doing that. Oh, fuck. I forgot the come on, girl. Damn. I fell. I fell so fast. So fast. Can't hold myself back. High heels. High. I can't believe this is the podcast. <laughs> Sorry. People, listen to this. Let's all stop. Let's all stop. All right. It's just me. Fucking, I'm the only one here. <laughs> Guys. The plot's so far fucking gone at this point that I don't know what this podcast is anymore. It was never good, but fuck, it was never this as well. Um, hang on, I missed the part where he said, Randress, and I need to go back. Gotta, okay. I'm gonna hold myself. Okay, I've done this. All right, here we go. High heels, high heels, red dress, red dress. <laughs> Gotta catch my breath. I'm slipping into the lava. All right, we'll skip to the rap because I've already shown that I know the chorus. Um, for some reason, there's like a interlude that goes into this like fucking weird rap part, which I don't know why. Um, I can see is you. I like the how breathy they sing, man. Like to get chicks fucking hard over there. Music, they're just like, all I can see is you. <laughs> and he just like goes, <sighs> in the microphone. So all these girls are like, fuck, I love the way Nick Jonas just breathes. <laughs> I love the way Joe and fucking Kevin breathe. <laughs> Poor Kevin. I've already talked about that on the podcast. Fucking Kevin was lucky to be in the band, let's be honest. Um, Staring me down. I'm going to feel it too. How's that where they just go like, okay, where's the fucking rap? Burning up in the place tonight. Oh, fuck, I don't know it. Something, 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 then I'm feeling right. Don't try and fight. And that's all right. Oh, that's right. I know the call and response. I know the response that the Jonas Brothers do. I don't actually know the rap. Okay, guys, I don't know the rap at all. Fuck. Damn it, I should have stopped before the rap and then I would have looked so cool. I would have looked so awesome if I had just stopped. Damn it. Ugh, that's so annoying. You know what, guys? Say what you will about that, about the last three minutes of this podcast. No one else is doing it. It's fucking, it's, it's, a, it's original. I mean, no, it's not. It's me singing Jonas Brothers songs, but you know what? It's unique and fuck, you can't, you cannot, Get me on that. It's hard to trash that. It's hard to fucking trash a guy doing his best. So, you know, um, yeah. What? How long have we been gone for? Guys, I think that's...
pretty much when you start singing old Jonas Brothers songs, usually when you call it a day, it's usually when you go, well, that's probably enough. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my advice. If you're losing the plot, just uh, force Janoskins or Jonas Brothers on people and make it seem like it's their idea and watch their confusion but also watch them start smirking and go, that's a pretty good bit. <laughs> and you'll also get the people who uh, just go, oh, I remember this song, and then actually get into it, and that's when you turn it off. You go, no, 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 we're mocking them. We're not having fun, okay? Um, I will answer, okay, before we go, I guess I'll answer one question because I got a bunch of questions like a few weeks ago when I asked you guys to send in questions, and I never got through them all. Uh, and then we'll bloody wrap it up. I don't think I have anything. Hang on. I just want to see. Dude, my stress levels are at a 32. Now, all I need to do is just sing the Jonas Brothers. Apparently, that relaxes me. I've been stressed out this whole time. Little did I know. Just got to put on Nick, Joe, and Kevin and just go, I'm sleeping. And just watch my stress levels plummet. Into the lava. Oh, now I'm at a 26. I'm burning up. Burning up, and then my watch will eventually just give up and go. You are the you are the master. I cannot help you. That's what I want. I think that's the end goal with this new smartwatch. Is that my watch goes? You are a pinnacle of health. Take me off your wrist. My work is done. I think that's the end goal of me buying this watch. Is clocking it. It's not like a video game, but I reckon I can clock it. I reckon I can get so healthy that the watch is like you know, stop sculpting your body, all right? Go and work on your personality. And then my watch goes, <laughs> just kidding. That's perfect too. And then we just fun, we just laugh and have fun. And we just go, I'm sleeping into love. And we've got like zero stress because we're just singing and having fun with Nick, Joe, and Kevin. Um, that's pretty much, uh, I just summed up my fantasy. That's, that's, that's like, if someone goes like, where do you want to be in five years, Luke? That's pretty much my end goal. And also be, to be doing comedy and that. But mainly just get, you know, becoming best friends with my watch, it giving up on trying to help me. And yeah, that sounds, sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Fuck. I wish I could have found it this week, guys. But it's just gone. All right. The plot's officially left. Oh, and also the Weed War update. Um, I'm just having a week off the Weed War. I think, as I said last week, there's not a lot to update on. There's definitely weeds that have grown back and I can maybe put that on my Instagram story this week if you want to go check out the progress. But I think I'm just going to give it a couple of weeks to see. Just to, I'm, I want to give the weeds a chance now. I'm, a, I'm like an honorable man. I'm not going to kick him when it's down. I went pretty hard early. I'm going to give them a chance to strike back, you know, just like the rebellion did with the empire. I guess they just the empire just struck back. But then I guess part three. So we're currently at, it was a new hope. Now we're at the weed strike back. And then hopefully uh, if they strike back too hard, um, it'll be a return of the Luke and we just smash it. And also Cam, massive shout out to you, man. Hope your weed war is going well. Uh, also had an email uh, from another person doing a weed war. I hadn't actually read it, so it mightn't be good. Probably should have read it before the podcast. Um you know what? I'll just I'll just read it out, man. To 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 General Luke Kidgel of the Anti Weed Rebellion. Um, man, I really like the way that sounds, and it looks good on paper too. I'm writing to you in great te- in great detail about my success in one of the most bloody battles this war has seen. On May the twelfth, you should probably just do May twelfth, man. I, Commander YPN Kieran. Um, I don't know why it's YPN, but cool. That might be his name. Uh, led a squad of fierce and unhinged warriors into my grandfather's back garden in Newcastle, England, which hasn't seen a good fight in five plus years. Guys, I'm fucking in. Whatever, wherever this story is going to go, I'm in it for the long haul. Dude, You've this is like reading those really good war stories where you're, you're reading like an old journal and you're like, wow, is that what it was really like in the trenches? God damn, Kieran, you've got me here. Uh we began with hedge trimmers, chainsaws, strimmers. I don't even know what that is. And a scythe. That's like a medieval weapon, bro. 
Those green bastards didn't even see us coming. Within the first day, 10 plus kilos of vegetation of vegetation fell easily, amounting to thousands of slaughtered weeds and grass. Dude, this sounds like a fucking weed holocaust. I'll be honest. This is this is a cleansing. This is not a war. This sounds like a fucking weed aside. <laughs> um Jesus Christ, this is way more hectic than I thought it was going to be. Sorry, if you're a weed listening to this, tune out now because I don't like your hopes and the weeds making a comeback here. When the second day rolled around, we made a classified excursion to our local home base and purchased another trimmer as the other was destroyed in battle and a fleet of weed killer to unleash airborne attacks on the enemy. Bro, they made it fucking rain after you got it with a chainsaw. What kind of hectic weeds are you trying to get rid of where you need a chainsaw? Bro, <laughs> that's insane. I think you're, you, I think this guy doesn't know what a weed is. It's just like a tree in his backyard. He's like, fuck this tree. <laughs> Looks like a weed to me. <laughs> um, once we returned, we began our second crusade against the inferior invaders with Weed Killer. Our intelligence informed us that the true enemy was Poison Ivy. Well, I decided to fight fire with fire and poisoned the ivy. Ah, my man. Woohoo. This is what I'm talking about. There's nothing more I love in this world than a bloody weed war success story. This is, dude, this is making me fucking harder than Keeling texting me right now. Dude, my wrist is just, oh, and it's not, not even getting a notification. Um, oh, this, dude, that's crazy. Like, as someone who is becoming a dad, just the thought of how much these weeds suffered fucking really, really excites me. <laughs> um okay where am i up to dude this is so long and he doesn't put any paragraphs speaking of fire we thought the best way to ward off you weren't speaking of fire oh fight fire with fire of course speaking of fire we thought that the best way to ward off future rebellions was to burn the prisoners in full view of the frontline troops bro this this is getting fucking dark they burnt the weeds in front of the other weeds this is, man, I don't, you are the Hitler of fucking weed wars. I don't know what to tell you, man. This is, I feel like, I feel like you've completely just ignored any human rights. There's so many human rights of it, like violations throughout this that I don't know whether to be proud or concerned. Like, or the fact that it goes on. Like, I keep, I can keep reading it, guys, but it's getting more graphic the more we go on. So he's already burning weeds in front of other weeds, right? The smell of dead and living plants burning while hacking away at a wall of ivy is truly a moment that has and will haunt me until my death. <laughs> okay, he admits that he has a soul. That's good. I knew we took it too far when the plume of... <laughs> this is the best email the podcast has ever got. <laughs> I knew we took it too far when the plume of smoke filled the battlefield and clouded my senses if they weren't already. And we chose to retreat until the morning. Bro, they were burning so much fucking weeds that they they couldn't even continue burning them. God damn. At the start when he said, uh, I led a squad of fierce and unhinged warriors into my grandfather's back garden. I thought he was like playing it up a bit, going like, oh, you know, they were unhinged. Bro, you guys need to all see a therapist, it sounds like, after this battle. It sounds like you just didn't know what you were getting yourselves into, but holy shit. On the morning of Thursday, the 14th of May, so two days later, the third and final day of the Great Weed Battle, uh, the decision had been made to carry out all prisoners' public executions and give poison weeds the decision to lay down their arms and return to their families. A full day of burning ended with complaints from other humans of the, of the war crimes committed, an order from Her Majesty's Royal Police Force to put a stop to the senseless burning of innocents. Wait, the cops came? However, the weeds had already surrendered and the main route was successfully apprehended before the boys in blue issued their warning. Also, oh, you guys were burning so much weeds 
the police actually got involved. <laughs> this makes my weed war look like that shitty little one that doesn't even get a video game made about it, mate. This is like the one that will go down in history as Luke's... Like, my weed war is the one that I guess started a lot of weed wars, but it will not be the one that was remembered for its brutality and I guess just like the amount of weeds killed. I see this battle as a win despite the police interference and the fact that my granddad's neighbors hate us. The weeds have been eradicated and smoked as all weeds should be. I expect a promotion to general sometime soon and it has been an honor to serve you uh, and end the reign of the Green Lactic Empire. With regards, Commander YPN Kieran of the British uh, Regiment. Oh my God. Oh my God. He sent photos of the carnage. Oh my God. I'm going to have to blur these if I put them on the screen. These are fucking horrifying. This is like watching Schindler's List all over again. Fuck. Oh, there they are burning. Oh, my God. that's I can't unsee it. That is, I'm going to have to blur that footage, guys. That is absolutely horrific. Um, You know what? <sighs> Kieran, you are no longer a commander, my friend. It's very obvious to me that you have shown, as from one general to another, that you've been officially promoted because you've shown that, yes, it was a little harsh, but you've shown in there that, that you are aware that perhaps senseless violence against weeds is not okay. Um, even though obviously they're weeds and you know, they're an empire and they're overgrowing backyards all around the world. But I feel like it shows you've shown a human aspect, you've shown strength, courage, and you've also shown how to lead unhinged warriors into such a battle. And that is, uh, the practices of a general, my friend, uh, hats off to you. And, Respect out there. It's been awesome hearing about all your weed wars. That one was fucking hectic. And uh, I will we'll post uh, some photos from that um, during the week. But holy shit, Kieran, that's unbelievable. Guys, that is well and truly the end of the podcast. We've gone over time. Again, perhaps it was the bit where I decided to sing the Jonas Brothers for three minutes. Hard to say. But by the way, thank you all very much for listening. And uh, yeah, if you have any topics, suggestions, stuff I can talk about um, while all this stuff is still going and why not a lot is happening, then let me know if you find my plot anywhere. Please send it back to me. I fucking need it. I'm going insane. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.